everyone's having a wonderful weekend today. As usual, I'm the Krispy Kreme guy, yes. Hope you all played the game last episode. Hope to hear in the comment box afterwards if anybody went to Home Depot to catch some Pokemon. It, it, it's all you. We're starting with that already. It's a great lead-in. It's a great lead-in. It really is. Well, yeah, another great leading once again. Continue the drinking game this week, which how many times it says Krispy Kreme or Home Depot. I mean, well, so you should have one drink, two drinks total, sorry. And by the end, you'll have probably a thousand. That's so, okay. Yeah. Whatever. So, yeah, this week, uh, got a few topics for you. First off, I'm a Cubs fan. So, as we know, you know one of my teams won a championship since 1908. But... There's a lot of great players that haven't won a championship. So now, does not winning a championship take your level of greatness down, you know, notch or two? I don't, I don't think it does. I, I don't, no. <sighs> to me, it kind of does. Because when you, when you talk about all the, great, the greatest players, how many times does someone who has not won a championship come up? Well, I mean, you could talk about Chris Carter. He just doesn't that. come up with the greatest players of all time in the NFL. He's a Hall of Famer, but if you put, well, if you're talking like the upper tier, he's not there. Oh, I'm just, I was just talking in general. I mean, though, he's like, a great player, I'm, but I mean, like when you talk about the greatest, when like you're making a list of the greatest players ever to play a game, how many times does a person who has not won a championship come up in that list? Well, let's see here. If, if you, you get, if you take the NFL. Dan the Marino. only one I can, uh, yeah, the only one I could think of that would be in that list that hasn't won is Dan Marino. Other than that, everyone else that you would think of right off the bat would be someone that has won a championship. We got Joe Montana. Yeah, he's won one though. Well, well, I'm, I'm exactly that's what I'm saying. Oh. Joe Montana, Steve yeah, Young, John. Is Barry John Sanders LA. in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, he's in. So yeah, that would that would be another mm. you know another person to put in there is Barry Sanders. You know, so Dan Marino, Barry Sanders, but then you have you know Walter Payton. He has Jim Brown did, John Elway, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Brett Favre. You, know, you go down all his list and all these people. Jerry Rice, all won championships. Jerry Rice still probably would have had enough even if he didn't win the championship though to get in. But he did. So kill his yeah. legacy. He was kind of a freak. This thing that you know, basketball. You know, I guess one of the, you know, some of the players that you would think of that had won a championship, Charles Barkley. John Stockton. John Stockton, Carl Malone. Carl Malone. But when you think of, like, the greatest ever, you know, it's Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, you know. LeBron James. All these people that have won a championship. LeBron James. You know, how far, I'm just ignoring that. LeBron James! <laughs> How far do you get down the list before you get to like a Charles Barkley or Carl Malone or John Stockton that hasn't won a champion? I, I guess it would depend on the person you're talking to. I mean, some people would probably have Charles Barkley pretty high on their list, maybe, and some people would have him pretty low. I mean, I guess it would just depend. And then, you know, baseball, I mean, as far as having won championships, it's obviously any Cub. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a kid anyway. Any great cup hasn't won a championship, so <laughs> feel for him. I mean, sorry, based on, but I mean, if you think about you know the all-time greats: Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth, Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, Bar Barry Bonds, and Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's won a championship, yeah. I mean, Derek Jeter, and he could be up there on the now, some people's list as a great, I guess. Barry Bonds, I don't believe, has ever won a championship. But he again, has the numbers, though, to get into the Hall of Fame and the legacy, but they probably won't let him. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You know, He's kind of an exception juice. to that rule because, yeah, he's won a championship, and he's one of the greatest players of all time, but so many people will discount it because of the steroid issue. You know, which isn't unfortunate. You know, because I'm doing, but, you know, unfortunate. So, yeah, then when you have all these, you know, all these players that you think, I mean, it has to come to, a, you know, a head. You know, something. It has to come. It makes some sort of effect. You know, granted, it's not going to prevent anyone from being in the Hall of Fame or anything like that. It's never going to happen. You know, you could be a great player, but you're going to make it in the Hall of Fame if you don't win a championship. 
But when you talk about just like the legacy of people, I mean, that plays a factor in it. Because they, they reach the pinnacle of their respective sport. Not paying attention. I was. You know where you're going with that. You're I know where I'm going. I'm just trying to find the verbiage. Okay, so okay, so just go back in time. Okay, say LeBron didn't win any of these titles that he's won. If. That would severely hurt his legacy. I don't think that would, though, because he has well, so many more accolades. But that would always come up. If he did not win any of these championships and he was 0 for 7, that would always come Everyone would say LeBron James great, but he went 0 and 7. He, was, he had all these numbers, but he went 0 and 7 in the championship. That would always come up, and that would hurt his legacy if he... If he didn't win any of these championships. Even with like Dan Reno, everyone always says, he's great, but he didn't win the Super Bowl. There's always that, you know, great, but he didn't win when you come to, you know, talking like that. Whereas, you know, Joe Montana, he's great, and he won four Super Bowls. Tom Brady, great, and won four Super Bowls. John Owey had that talk where... He's great, but he hasn't won until his last two years. Then he got those two Super Bowls. Then he felt there was that justification. So now you can say John Elway, great, and won two Super Bowls. Whereas before it was, but hasn't won the big one. I, I don't. I. I have I have a hard time, I guess, admitting and saying that if a player has all these accolades, that if they don't win a championship, that then people are gonna say, "Oh, their legacy is just and I think tarnished." It, like in football, the quarterback has more pressure, I think, to win a Super Bowl. Whereas Barry Sanders never won a Super Bowl, but you don't have that same stigma around him as there is Dan Marino not winning a Super Bowl. Whereas Barry Sanders, he was great; he did everything he can. But the quarterback has such a more, you know, such a more important position. You know, they're so more solely responsible, people see them as leading a team to a championship. Whereas a running back, you never see them as a sole reason someone wins, but the quarterback, they get most of the credit. So I think, like, Barry Sanders doesn't have as much, doesn't get knocked as much as, say, a Dan Reno does for not winning a Super Bowl. Right. And the stand can be with basketball is because that's more, one player can affect that team so much that when that one great player doesn't win a championship, it's held against them. I can see it meaning more, I guess, in the NFL more so than basketball. Well, I would see as the NBA, you know, if to be considered an all-time great in the NBA, you would have to win a championship. I see that as more important than the NFL, ex with the exception of the quarterback position. I mean, like baseball, you can have a great pitcher, but they only pitch one, you know, five days, you know, one every right. five days. So, you know, that is a more team environment. Basketball, you can have that one player that makes such a huge impact where he can, you know, lead that team to, he has more control in that team to lead him to a championship. And then football, the quarterback is seen as, you know, the you know, stronghold of that, you know, that team. That's the key, the key yeah, position they need. So he has that. more, more of uh, focus on twin championship than the offensive lineman. Or the wide uh, nobody's receiver. Nobody's gonna care about an old line. But like you know, wide receiver. Even they would be like, "Oh, well, he's great. He never won a championship, but he never had that quarterback to throw it to him." You know, something like that. Which I mean, you could make the case for, I guess, Megatron. I guess he had. Yeah. He had Matt Stafford to throw to him, but I mean, most of the stuff that he got in his career, he. he I mean, there were some years, I guess, where Stafford was on, but. Yeah, so I think, you know, having that winning a championship, you know, affect your legacy, and it affects it more depending on, you know, position. position. And then, you know, in basketball, it affects them more just because that's seen more as one individual player can make such a big impact on the team. Right, it's basically, again, that one great player, but you have to have the rest of the team performing well. I mean, you can't have just that one player, you know, 
that can hit a home right, every single time, or that one yeah. pitcher that pitches every five games. You know, so that that has to be more of a team. And the NFL, for the most part, has to have a team with the exception of the quarterback, where they have, I think, the most pressure to get that championship. Because that kind of seems what defines a quarterback. Not necessarily the rest of the team, but the quarterback gets that justification by winning the Super Bowl. It's like, you know, look at John Elway. You know, he... Had, he got finally got that justification when he won his. Peyton Manning even had you know had to get his justification winning that first Super Bowl, and in a sense, almost that second too. See, I wasn't like that though. Like I still thought, and you can still think of him as a great quarterback. But you know, even Dan Marino, there's still that stigma. He didn't win this. You know, didn't win a Super Bowl. I mean, I can see. I guess where I can see it halfway. I guess. Yeah, I can see I can see it halfway down the road. I guess. Like I said, it's not gonna completely you know erase what they did, but there will always be that. But didn't win a Super Bowl, and that that does knock them down slightly. Because I, mean, I don't think you talk about the greatest quarterbacks ever. Dan is in that conversation as you know one of the greatest passers, but very rarely do you ever see him put ahead of Joe Montana or John Elway or you know now Tom Brady or. You know, pay, you know. Well, I mean, with that or, though, you. But I mean, he had better stats than John yeah, Elway, that's what Terry I'm Bradshaw. You have to go to their stats. You couldn't just. So I mean, he had better stats, but those other ones get placed ahead of him. And the reason why, you know, Joe Montana four rings, Terry Bradshaw four rings, Tom Brady four rings, John Elway two rings. You know, Peyton Manning or Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. He, well, he now has all the numbers better than Marino. So he has all numbers better than Reno plus two rings. Both Dan Reno, great great passer, he has all the stats. He had he had all the records to like Brett Favre and John Elway came, but he was still knocked down some for the John Elways for Terry Bradshaw Terry Bradshaw's John Tess because they had the rings to go with it. I mean, I see, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I I do, but I mean I guess, too, it depends on the person you ask. Like, there's going to be probably a million people going to have 10 million different opinions. Yeah, and I mean, you ask any Miami Dolphins fan, they're going to say Marine's greatest quarterback ever. Exactly. But, you know. Or they'd say Bob Greasy because he was the <coughs> only undefeated team. Yeah, he's not the greatest. If anyone put Bob Greasy in the talks of the greatest quarterback ever, they're, they didn't have their heads, heads examined. They clearly don't know enough about the NFL to make that discussion. So, I mean, yeah, can't. If anyone said that about Bob Grease, he was, a, he was good. He was not in the all time greats. I mean, you, can't, you can't put him can't put him up there. So, I mean, good, but not all time greatest ever. Would you put him with Joe Montana? Uh, I would, but I'm just saying the bandwagon Dolphin fan, or not bandwagon, but the diehards probably would. There's probably some from that would put him above Dan Marino. I mean, see, uh, I'm a diehard Pack fan. I love Bart Starr. I love Brett Favre, but I'm not putting you know Bart Starr, Brett Favre above Joe Montana, you know, above you know even now Tom Brady. I mean, I'm not gonna do that. And like, like I said, Brett Favre had all the great numbers, and he passed Dan Marino. And, Based on all of his records, he got one Super Bowl. But, I mean, Joe Montana had four. It's hard to, yeah, hard he to got top that. I mean, he showed up on the biggest stage That's... four times. You know, he did have Jerry Rice to throw to also. Yeah, I mean, Brett Favre had good, you know, tar you know targets around him. I mean, not, I mean, obviously not enough to the level of Jerry Rice. Right. But he still had good targets, and with J or Joe Montana's first Super Bowl, he didn't have Jerry Rice. Yeah, that was that was the only one probably where he had the he had to show he was that good. Yeah, and he did, and and then you know you have, there's always that talk about the F Super Bowl in the Bengals where they had to have that game winning drive. Mm -hmm. He goes into the huddle of you know that game winning drive and says, "Hey, is that John Candy in the stands?" Yeah. Just so cool and, you know, like no no pressure felt whatsoever. I mean, so it's things like that. It's those intangibles, too, that you have to take into consideration when you talk about, you know, the all-time greats. And he had he had those intangibles. I mean, like I said, I'm not even a 49ers fan, but you got to, you know, respect what he did. I mean, was, yeah, can we record this? Can <laughs> we get this on, like, national news? <laughs> so I'm, 
hey, if he's a great all-time great player, you can't deny it. So I mean, he was he was just that. He was that good. He was. So yeah, keeping on the uh, football and you know, quarterback things, there's a couple different storylines that came out this week uh, as far as <coughs> NFL quarterbacks. First one, we'll, we'll save uh, 49ers one here for a second. First one, Tony Romo. Oh, no, Tony! You Broke didn't have him. a glazed donut. You went to Dunkin' instead of Krispy Kreme. That's why you got hurt again. Broken back, out six to ten weeks. Another season of him barely going to be on the field. I think he has to, in all honesty, okay, Cowboy fans, I know you guys are some of the most strong diehard fans but and you a lot of you defend Romo to the bitter end but it's time to hang it up. This might be the end. I it, mean, yeah. It's I, it's time to hang it up, Tony. Like, how, how many seasons do you need of him being injured and missing the entire you know, the entire or good majority of the season for it's like, you know, we really should just move on from this guy. I mean he's not young. No, he's only getting older. Yeah, and he's in his, you know, mid thirties. And then he showed up to training camp during the summer out of shape, too. <laughs> yes, I mean. I'm just saying. They have what everyone, you know, appears, you know, to think is a very good backup right Dan now. Prescott. Yeah, so he's looked really good in preseason. So if, you know, these six to ten weeks that run was out and he gets his shot, he could, you know, play his way into that starting job and play Romo out of a job. He, the Prescott has a lot of... Yes, he's a rookie, but he has a lot going for him team-wise. He has the best O-line. He does have Ezekiel Elliott, who everybody's saying is going to have a good year. He has Des Bryant to throw to. Um, Terrence Williams. Jason Witten. And the thing is, Jerry Jones seems to really love Tony Romo. So now, even if Prescott plays fantastic, is Jerry Jones going to have that influence over Jason Garrett? It's like, no, 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 I... When Rome was back, he's he's a starter. Oh, I wouldn't put it past him. And because it's Jerry Jones, I mean, that, and Romo's his dude. And the sad thing is, and Jerry Jones, everyone said that's the reason why the Cowboys haven't been good in <laughs> you know two decades. Because Romo's been that bad. Well, and and because Jerry Jones keeps meddling in the football process, where he needs to just at this point just step away. And this hasn't he hasn't worked with him meddling in it for, you know for Pass twenty years me. now. Yeah. So just stay out of it. You know. If Prescott is playing well, and Romo comes I back, I would keep him in. It's I think it should be Prescott's job. I mean, Tony, or yeah, I and mean, you have, well, I mean, if they want, they could put Tony Romo back in the field, but he's just gonna get carted right back off the field, and Prescott will be right back in because Romo just got injured again. Because so, it goes to Dunkin' Donuts instead of Krispy Kremes. That's what it is. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, like I said, it should be Prescott's team, but even if they do for some stupid reason put Romo back in there, he's just gonna get hurt again. So I mean. I will say on this episode that I will not be shocked if when Romo comes back, Jerry Jones benches Prescott for Tony Romo. I wouldn't be shocked either. I'm pretty sure when we did our division previews, we talked about the Cowboys and how Tony Romo was probably going to get hurt. We did, yeah. Yeah, we nailed that we nailed one. Nailed it. That's one out of the box, one check mark. Yes. I'm right on that one. All right, so now uh, the other quarterback making some headlines your uh your boy there mr kaepernick decided to take what he thought was a stand well <laughs> take a stand not literally but by choosing not to stand up for the national anthem for what he says he didn't want to show respect for a flag that oppresses you know the minorities first okay you're the 49ers fan so first your thoughts on your quarterback so this is obviously a hot button topic right now. You know, there's a lot of a lot of angered people. My this is my approach on it. Yes, it's awful that he did it. <coughs> Probably not the smartest thing, but at the same time, as a person, you know, he has that that right. He has that right to stand or not to stand. I mean, they the NFL came out and said that that's the right every player has. I mean, the other thing, too, is, um, you know, wrong timing with it. You know, maybe, yes, um, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I mean, that's, uh, that's his choice. If he didn't want to stand, he doesn't have to stand for it. 
And that's true. I mean, that is the right of, you know, everyone is they don't have to stand for it when they don't want to. Now, I'm just going to preface this by saying that I come from a military family. Oh, yeah, my so dad that is, was an officer. That is going to very well influence my opinion on this. Right. My dad was in the military for 20-some-odd years. My brother-in-law is in the military. friends in the military. My dad, grandpa was in the Korean War. My great-uncle was in World War II. And my step, or my grandpa-in-law was in World War II. So, I there's a lot of military experience there. Standing up for the National Anthem is not, it's just a show of respect for living in the country that you do and showing respect for all the people that have died to live in that country to take advantages of those things that you do. Do we have issues in this country? Yes. There's a lot of issues in this country that needs to be fixed. And I get wanting to take a stand on those issues. I just don't see as that being the appropriate time to do it. When the National Anthem is being played, you stand up and show respect for all the people that have come before you that have, you know, died in the wars, died protecting the country that allows you to do what you do. You live in a country that allows you to play a game and make $19 million to do it. $19 million to play a game. One that you have not been very good at over the past couple of years. And so you're going to just choose to sit down in the National Anthem. One, you're also sitting down in the National Anthem in a preseason game. It's not like it's this, you know, Super Bowl where, you know, you're, that would be making a stand if you're going to, you know, say no. Like, take a stand, you know, against this and I'm going to sit down during the National Anthem in the Super Bowl. Now you're doing it in a preseason game. Well, I mean, he's already come out and <laughs> said that he's going to continue to do it. Yeah, and he will continue to get lambasted for it. You know, like I said, if you want to take a stand, there's plenty of other more meaningful ways to do it. Why don't you take some of that $19 million a year that you're getting paid and do something with that to help out, you know, in communities, you know, around there that you think need some help to, you know, Go to some charitable organizations that, you know, do some good work. I just, I don't see how sitting during the National Anthem is going to give you the results you're looking for. Well, I mean, he is also with LeBron and Mello and They Wade stand for the there. National Anthem. Well, they do, but he's in their whatever thing it is to oppress or minorities matter oh, or whatever it is. Like I said, I, you know, I completely agree with you and take a stance for that. The National Anthem is just a show of respect for the people that are serving this country, the people that have served this country, and the people that have paid the ultimate price for this country. You are showing respect for all of those fallen people. Think, you know, think back to World War II, when we're storming the beaches of Normandy. Back then, there was 18-year-olds that are going out to their certain death for the country that they love. They knew, I'm not coming back from this, but I'm giving my life so we can continue to live in a country that offers freedom, offers people the choice to stand up for a national anthem. And while I get it is his choice, it is just out of respect that you do it and find other ways to do your protest. I mean, there's plenty of other you know opportunities out there to do it. Sitting down for the National Anthem just means this one is showing disrespect, and it's not going to get the point across that you want it to. It's not going to change people's minds like, oh, he's sitting down for the National Anthem. I'm going to listen to what he has to say, and I'm going to take it to heart, and I'm going to run with it. No, I mean, look at all the reaction he's getting. All of it is negative. No one's... I even, I've heard very few people come out positive and like, yeah, good for you. Don't stand up. Everyone, everyone's saying, stand up. Show some respect. Just stand up and find other ways to do your protest. And that's where I'm going to ask. There are other more meaningful ways to be able to protest. And I get that thing, you know, you should be able to protest and people do need to protest because there are a lot of things that do need to be worked on. And that is just my thought on it. Like I said, growing up in the military family, I grew up, you know, respecting the military and respect the flag. I couldn't go to the movies without the National Anthem coming on before every movie. And we would stand, take off our hats, and stand for the National Anthem before a movie. And that's just what is growing up on a military base. So, that's my, that's just my thought on it. Show some respect for the P 
people that are serving your country and that have served the country and have died for your country and do your protest in a different, and I feel like it could be a very much more meaningful way. Hmm? Just my thoughts on it. So, like I said, a lot of uh, memes have come across down here for this, just put a lighter spin on the issue. Where he's sitting on a bench, but he's going to spend a lot of time on that bench. He probably should stand up because all year he's going to be sitting down on that bench. So, and then you know you have those teams where it's him and Tom Brady, and Tom's like, "Thanks, Cap," and he's like, "For what?" Tom Brady's like, "Now I'm not the most hated quarterback in the NFL now." No, <laughs> which is kind of true. So, just puts a letter, you know, letter spin on it. Right Tom there. has, oh, yeah. It's you know he's gave it a few weeks. People are probably going to figure about this anyways. Once they, oh, yeah. Once, once the, the NFL starts, people are going to be like, oh, that Yeah, happened. once oh, the actual okay. season oh, starts, gosh. yeah, this is going to be a, a non-issue. But it's preseason. There's not a whole lot going on. So yeah, that's got to find be, somebody to throw darts at. That's going to be a hot-button issue. So, yeah, you have our views on that. We'd love to hear your views on that. Also, your views on do championships matter that much? I think they do. You are um, on the fence. Uh, yeah, I'm like at Krispy Kreme and Home Depot. Krispy Kreme and Home Depot. In some, in some places, they could be like next door, you know. They really should think of that merger. <sighs> I'd be there every day. You would. I would even sign a petition. You should say Krispy Kreme like five more times really quick. Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme. It's five shots right there you all have to take now. Home Depot. <coughs> and another one. So leave your comments below. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Like us on Facebook. Share with your friends on Facebook and on YouTube. Be awesome. And, and we'd love to hear some ideas for topics you guys have. Any questions, we'd love to answer. So give Also, us bias and big shout out. Yes, start big out. Big shout out. Got it done last quest night. Quest for the six pack. They're winning number one. Got a long ways to go, though. Still put up the horns. All right, guys, everyone have a good night.